Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It is match preview showtime. It's the middle of a busy week. Obviously, there was a one-all draw at home to Tramia Rovers last Saturday before Tuesday night's very disappointing trip to Prow Lane where Jules went down by two goals to nil. And to compound the misery of the evening, we had Connor Masterson sent off just before half-time, so he will miss this weekend's game against David Artel's Grimsby Town. And to come on and tell us all about said Grimsby Town. I'm pleased to announce tonight's guest is Chris from the View from the Finders podcast. I will put their details in the description at the bottom of the video. So go and give them a follow for all a Grimsby Town uh, perspective of things in the build up to, during and after the game, hopefully. Chris, um, it's eight o'clock. It's Wednesday night. You've had a long day at work, so I appreciate you coming on. Um, are you good? Obviously, you're, you're yes. still buzzing, I'm sure, after a big win against MK Dons on Tuesday evening. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us on, Matt. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, um, still buzzing from the from the uh, quite unexpected uh, win from last night. So uh, yeah, all, all good. Thank you. Excellent stuff. So as always, we'll look at, at recent form and, and that game will fall into it. So we'll quickly sort of go through the duels because everyone knows, as, as most of my audience are, Gillingham fans. So yeah, from the last <laughs> six, we've garnered eight points from 18 in the form of two wins, two draws and two defeats. So consistently inconsistent is a phrase that I keep using and I fear I will keep using it until the final day of the season. There's been some credible draws against Stockport. A uh, disappointing draw against Tranmere. There was two really good wins against Wrexham and Salford and then thoroughly disappointing defeats against Wimbledon as recently as Tuesday night, like we've already alluded to. And Barrow, two games against direct rivals for the playoffs. We've come up short. Grimsby, just starting to find a bit of form. There was obviously that harrowing home defeat by five goals to one against Doncaster Rovers a few weeks ago and then a one-all draw at Morecambe, which wasn't such a bad result. But since then, it's four unbeaten for RTL's men. There's been a good win against Forest Green, a draw with Wimbledon by, uh, to the form of nil-nil. Another good draw, I suppose, in the sense against Sutton because they're the team that, that have been hunting the Mariners down in terms of that dreaded drop zone and, and that, that line and the trap door and all that type of thing. And of course as we've already mentioned, a really, a really impressive 1-0 win against promotion chasing MK Dons just a couple of nights ago. So nine points from the last 18 available. Grimsby currently sit 21st with 38 points uh, from 36 games, sorry, yeah. And Jill's are currently 10th with 55 from 38. Uh, Chris, yes, let's, let's, let's talk about that game against MK Dons at a Blundell Park Tuesday night. It seems like a good starting point for Grimsby fans. I'm sure you want to relive it again because, yeah, huge win. Yeah, absolutely. And like I alluded to at the top of the show, um, a little bit unexpected, really. I think uh, uh, we, we all went into it, uh, you know, confident, shall we say, after uh, the upturn in form recently. But um, I think it's fair to say with MK Don sitting fourth for the start of the night, um, we, were, we were anticipating a tough evening, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we, you know, the, the stats show that obviously MK Don's had a lot more that the possession and the ball, but mm -hmm. as they do, you know, that's, that's their style of play yeah. and, and uh, new recent sort of formation uh, and switch and style of play has been a little bit more pragmatic and resolute. Um, so um, that was always going to be the way that the game was going to go last night, but I thought we were excellent. And, and for all their possession, um, they only created uh, one shot on target, I believe. And uh, we looked good for the win, I thought. And um yeah, just continuing this uh, little upturn in form, and it's come just at the right time for us, as, as like as you alluded to, a disastrous sort of five-one home defeat um, a couple of weeks ago to uh, another relegation rival at the time, Doncaster. Um, and it seems after that game, and, and the days after that game, there were some uh, clear the air talks between Artel and the players and the backroom staff, and and um, from out of that has been born this sort of new formation, and uh, we've switched to a more of a five-three-two, five-four-one um, out of possession, and um, yeah, it seems to be suiting the players' strengths a little bit more at the moment. That's interesting because because I'm looking at. Sofa score, which is the app that I use, and, and that's got you lined up as a as a four two three one last night. So is that correct or is that slightly wrong? I know it can be flexible, so I understand that they have to pigeonhole it a little bit. But yeah, they've got you down as a back four of Malarkey, Farm, Rogers, and Hume, um, and then Clifton, Thompson, Ganua, Hollahan, and Issa as the midfielders with a bit crew as the centre forward. So I'm assuming the flexibility comes in play, like you say, in terms of being in and out of possession. Yes, 
Yeah, I noticed that's how um, a few of the apps had us lined up last night. But no, it, it's it's been more of a um, five three two with with okay. Clifton and Hume playing more as wing backs. Um, right. Okay. In recent weeks. Um, so yeah, that does give us flexibility. Uh, and, and a bit of fluidity um, at times um, when we're attacking. Obviously, we can we can get those wing backs forward and and, and, and get midfielders bombing on uh, to support the, um, the the strikers and the attackers. Uh, and then defensively, which is where we had to improve, we had to um, be more resolute and, and stop conceding goals because we just we were just conceding as the stats show. So many, I think, at one stage it got to twenty one goals in in four or five home games which was just you know it was disastrous relegation form at that stage so yeah. they had to do something and do something quick and go into a back five seems to have seems to have um helped that yeah just looking at the, the lineup for the previous um game against Sutton, it's got you lined up yeah it's got sort of malarkey tucked in a little bit more than Hugh yeah. Clifton with three in front and then a centre forward pair and obviously Danny Rose played in that game against Sutton from the start which would have been slightly different um so I think it's it's fair to say that Artel came in, I think, end of November. Yeah. Um, wouldn't say he hit the ground running. The old myth or new manager bounce that we all like to call it was wasn't really there. I think if I've looked and I've got this correct, it was it was ten points from the last dozen games. So to then see eight points earned from the last four matches is is a massive turnaround. Yeah. Is there signs now that Artel is starting to figure it out and starting to get it right? maybe moving forward in a more mid to long term way rather than because I get you've just got to get points now to, to stay up, which you will do because with no disrespect to, to Sutton, they're gone. And I think there's too many teams below you that, that are not good enough to, to sort of bridge the gap to what you could. And you've still got games in hand, which does help at this stage of the season. Yeah. So as disappointing as 22, uh, 23, 24 has been, I can imagine because of Last season, you were very good after coming out of the National League. That brilliant cup run that everyone remembers where I think you beat like five teams from divisions above yeah. or something ridiculous, including a couple of Premier League sides. It, it must have been a bit of a deflating season, this one. But I guess there's now shoots of recovery and calls for optimism under Artel moving into the end of the season and potentially 24-25. Yeah, I mean, I think even the the most pessimistic Grinsby fan wouldn't have wouldn't have had us down to be uh, relegation rivals or relegation. No, not at all. Stuff. I think I had you tenth um, in pre in my pre season yeah. predictions video. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, we you know we spoke to Gabriel Sutton recently, uh, another EFL pundit, and he had us making the playoffs at the start of the season. And uh, you know, naturally coming off the back of a, a good season last year, I think we finished eleventh, which was our highest league position in seventeen years, which says a lot. Sort of where we've where we've been over the last two decades and the decline, but um, yeah, there was a lot of positivity around the club. Uh, season ticket sales were at record high again, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's 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 obviously um, not panned out how and how any of us would have would have liked, uh, and that ultimately um, saw Hurst leave in um, Paul Hurst leave in November, mm -hmm. as you say, Dave Artel came in. And um, yeah, I think at that stage, Artel's assessment was very much that there was um, more than enough quality in the squad. We were easily going to stay up. And he started to sort of try and implement his, his philosophies and, and, and a way of playing um, quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, similar to obviously the philosophy, philosophies he had at Crew, uh, And it soon became obvious he didn't quite have the players yet uh, in the building to, um, to play that way. Um, and uh, he, he arguably he tried a little bit too long to um, to play that way before sort of changing and and um, accepting perhaps he, he needed to sort of row back on that a little bit. But um, he did. I think that's a sign of a, a good manager as well to yep, sometimes absolutely. admit that um, that you've not got things right. And and you know he recently did did admit that that he perhaps done tried to do too much too soon with this squad of players. Um, and and like I say, that's sort of um, uh, more recently seen that seen that change in formation and that change of um, approach, shall we say, from from Artel. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's ultimately why it's it's taken him a little bit longer to hit the ground running and and to adhere himself to the um, the fans because ultimately the squad was set up to play on uh, a Paul Hurst way, uh, which is is stark contrast really uh, from a Dave Artel. Um, team. So, uh, if you look at the team we had at Crew, for example, um, playing you know expansive attacking football, 
um, playing out, trying to play out from the back, for example, whereas Paul Hurst was always more sort of defensively minded. So we obviously had players to play one way and then Hurst is trying to sort of, uh, sorry, Artel's tried to sort of force um, a different uh, way of playing, which, you know, it, it, it was, you know, quite obvious quite early to the fans that we, we didn't have the players to do it, playing out from the back, for example. Hence why we conceded 21 goals in five home games. Um, so, yeah, I think that that explains, you know, why we perhaps didn't have that manager bounce. But, um, yeah, certainly in, in the last couple of weeks, I'd tell we seem to have sort of turned a corner and, and uh, the fans seem to be right behind our town now. Yeah, three clean sheets in the last four is an impeccable turnaround, like you say, from where you were just a few weeks ago. It's just astonishing. So mm. there seems to be similarities there, Chris, to, to, to Jill's. I know it's it's more pressing that you have to sack a manager when you're struggling at the wrong end of the table. So almost you disregard style of play because you just have to get someone else in to get fresh ideas and a fresh voice onto the training pitch and into the stadium on a match day and that type of thing. But yeah, there definitely seems to be some similarities with Jules because we had this big change of direction that we were promised back in October, November time when Neil Harris was sacked. But obviously it didn't quite make as much sense to, to some of our fan base, myself, and I've been very vocal about that because... <laughs> We were like eighth and only four points from top of the league at the time. But yeah, it's exactly the same in terms of Neil Harris wanted to play off of his front man. He's always been very direct. He was very successful at Millwall doing that and at Cardiff at a higher level. League won the championship for a while. Um, whereas we got told Stephen Clements was going to come in and it was going to be, you know, on the deck and it was all going to look a bit nicer. Um, but I've always been a bit old school and winning the best football is is winning football for me whether that's you don't get extra points for scoring a 55 pass goal than you do for just lumping it up to your number nine who, who brings it under control and flicks it onto the centre forward who whacks it in the back of the net it's, it's still three points at the end of the day yeah. I know we're not scoring enough but just quickly then what was your take because I don't think I've ever actually asked an opposition fan what was your take on it when the dismissal of Neil Harris was was announced because It'd just be interesting to get an outsider's view of it because obviously we're lots of contrasting views from within the fan base, but just someone who's a bit detached. Yeah, from the outside looking in, it was uh, I, w I was yeah very shocked. I mean, um, obviously when he was first appointed, it was uh, a big name really to to be at League Two level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having managed in the Championship, you know, not too long ago, uh, I think the intentions were clear from your owner at that time. Especially, I think it was was it last January. Uh, when the owner started to to really back the team, I think it yeah. seemed, and you you made some, um, uh, you had a really good window. I think in that yeah. January because you were towards the bottom, and then obviously had a real good good sort of upturn in form back in the last season. And I think from the outside looking in, especially from the start you made this season, it, it seemed you know a no brainer that Gillingham would be you know one of the um, promotion. Um, potential teams this season uh, yeah. and, and then whilst she was still obviously up there um, the news came out that uh, I think we actually discussed it on our podcast at the time and, and our shock of, of that um, and I think from the statement as well at the time it, it was it was a very strange one and um, yeah if I'm certainly if I was a Gillingham fan I would have been uh, just as uh, shocked and frustrated as, as you Matt but um, yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's all I can say, really. Right? <laughs> no, that's right. fine. Yeah, obviously, you, you, obviously was, yeah. No, of course, yeah, you can only get a certain amount of perspective on it from what you see on social media. I get that entirely. It was just yeah. interesting to ask because I was, I must, I must admit, the similarities I didn't realise um, with 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 Clements coming in and perhaps wanting to play a, a more of an attacking way, realising quite quickly that. League two sometimes isn't the, the time or the place to do that. That's it. That's what triggered um, my question because you said about Artel going, oh no, yeah. I might have spent too long trying to play oh. nice football and then I've had to go to a more robust way, which is what Clements did as soon as Ollie Hawkins got fit. It suddenly we went to a back three, two up top, went a bit more direct, a bit more League two, dare I say. Yeah. And what, what could be interesting again might be the same uh, for Clements. I think Artel, well, he's already alluded to the fact that this is only a temporary measure playing this way. Mm -hmm. um, he still wants to obviously um, progress the, 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 the squad and, and bring players in that can play his way. So mm -hmm. I'd, I'd imagine that, I assume that would be the, the way Clements will want to go as well, perhaps um, come the summer, depending on obviously, once you know what, what your league you're going to be in. So it wouldn't surprise me if, if um, Grinsby 
uh, we're playing a, a different style of football next year, perhaps one more, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. But I'm, I'm a little bit like you, to be honest, Matt. I'd, <laughs> the football purists won't like me saying this. I'd rather win a game one nil than than five four, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. um, exactly. Yeah. I had someone we drew with Stockport a few weeks ago, and, and someone said on our Facebook page, oh, "I'd rather we had a proper go and lost four three. Yeah, and I was like, "So you'd rather give up the point against the league leaders?" Because you might have enjoyed it for ninety minutes, yeah, but that's I each to their own. Them. I totally get that. It's but for me, it just didn't make sense. But like yeah. I say, we've all got different viewpoints. We, so, um, anyway, go on, sorry, carry I was on. just going to say a perfect example is we, we our five all draw in Notts County not long ago. I mean, the fans were raving about it afterwards. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I, it's not not good for uh, the old ticker really. Games like that, no, that's it. <laughs> you score five and still don't win the football match. There's something yeah, clearly it's, wrong, isn't there? That's it. Yeah. There's fundamentally a problem. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I don't really buy into that, but <laughs> but some do, and that's absolutely fine. I just, but like I say, thank you. I just wanted to, to get your viewpoint on it. Um, back mm. to Grimsby because we've gone off on a bit of a tangent there. Um, Danny Rose, fifteen goal contributions this season. I think it's it's twelve goals, three assists, and, and Abu Isa, thirteen in total, nine and four. Um, they're the two names when you look down your squad that sort of jump off the page. Um, yeah. So you'd think. I mean, what would we give for two players to have them goal numbers? We'd probably be in the top three if we had a goal scorer. <laughs> um, but we haven't, so we're not. Um, and our top scorer is, in fact, Connor Masterson, who's now banned for Saturday. So I'm not sure where the goals are going to come from at the weekend. Um, <laughs> obviously, them two have been brilliant in terms of keeping you above the dreaded line. Um, and I guess it doesn't bear thinking about where you'd be if you didn't have them numbers from them two. But Give me two players maybe that have got under the radar a little bit that have actually been important to this this battle and keeping you above the drop zone that that we might not be so aware of, but who just go about their business every week and a, a sort of solid performance for you. Sure. Well, uh, the the two I, I, I would go to off the top of my head were actually two players we brought in in January. I think we did some real good business now in hindsight okay. in January. Um, and, the, and the two I would say, firstly, Denver Hume, um, uh, who's been playing, we've said, every game since he came in at left wing back. Uh, we signed him from Portsmouth. Uh, prior to that, he played at Sunderland. I think yep. he came through the ranks at Sunderland. Um, so um, always played at high level. And you can tell, you know, his, his quality on the ball is, you know, he's really classy. Um, he's got a good engine on him. He, he can get forward just as easily as as he, as he can defend. Um, and he's got a real, real you know, classy delivery when he does get into those sort of attacking areas and he keeps the ball well, he keeps things ticking over. And um, for me, he's, he's, um, he, he, he stands out like a sort of form at league two level. Um, okay. I mean, obviously you'll see him on Saturday. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he's one of the first names on the team sheet at the moment for our town. And he's consistently been an eight out of 10 for us since January. Uh, and he's been a big part um, in, um, in our upturn and also, um, in terms of that defensive element, he's, we, we really needed to stop um, crosses coming into the box. We were conceding far too many goals from uh, wide areas and, and he's done that effortlessly. So uh, Denver Hume would be um, the first. And then the second, um, uh, I'd probably have to say Curtis Thompson. Uh, okay. Again, uh, another player we brought in in January. Um, has played majority of his career at League One or Championship level. Uh, was was part of the uh, Wickham side that went up to the Championship. Yeah, that was the uh, COVID the, season, wasn't it? Yeah, when they won. Yeah, with yeah. Gareth Ainsworth. Yeah, I remember yeah. him. Yeah. Um, and he is your, you know, your your, your, your classic defensive midfielder. Breaks up play, uh, starts attacks, uh, but very classy on the ball. Uh, Effort. It always seems to have, you know, that extra yard. Mm -hmm. Um of space um and um yeah he's his experience has, has been a godsend as well and and his uh, his leadership's qualities um you know he talks a lot of the players through the game and um yeah he's he's slotted in really nicely of course we lost Camille Conte in January who who was doing that role um prior but was a little bit raw um in 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 that respect he, you know absolute Rolls Royce of a of a player in, in some respects but uh, still only young, you know, early 20s. Uh, Curtis Thompson obviously has, you know, a lot more experience. And, uh, and now at this level, uh, well, high level, so, you know, he should rightly, uh, you know, stand out at this level, which, which he has been. And, and again, it's no coincidence that performances and results have improved since he's been, uh, he's been in the side. And, um, 
I think he's recently in the last two games played his first two um, full ninety minutes. So he's he's because I don't think he played an awful lot of football prior to January. So again, you know, no coincidence really um, with our upturn in form with those two um, in the side. Fair enough. Yeah. So some definitely some players to look out for then. Yeah. Um, just just one more thing before we get to like team news or predicted lineups and that type of thing was just I was just looking today and just sort of thinking about how bonkers League Two is. <laughs> like we know that the playoff race is ridiculous. It probably still goes down to about fifteenth at the moment with eight games to go, which is staggering. But just like we're eleven points higher than you at the moment. We've got seventeen more points than you, yet we've lost one more game. Yeah. And you comfortably saw us off in the reverse fixture, I remember, back at Blundell Park in September. Just, It's just nuts, isn't it? I think that's what I'm trying to say. Lee, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Look mental this season. Like, to... Yeah, we've, we've spoken at length, to be honest, on, on our podcast this 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 season, uh, how crazy Lee 2 has been. I know other podcasts that, that um, follow the EFL have been aghast at times of, of how League Two is going and the amount of goals that are being scored. And yeah. I mean, just just look at Wrexham. Not you know. from us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but yeah, Wrexham, I think, have conceded, you know, some of the most in the league and they're second, second in, in, in the table. So it, it's just crazy, really. Anyone can beat anyone on the day. Um, I know there's always an element of that League Two, but this season, more than any, it seems to... Um, Seems to be the case. So, um, yeah, it, and, and look at Walsall as well. Look at Walsall, you know, recently it only takes four or five wins on the bounce and you're right up in the playoffs. You know, they were down there with us, I think, to be honest, their run started with the 6-1 win at our place. So uh, you're welcome, Saddlers fans. But um, yeah, um, yeah, it doesn't take much really to, to be up there. And uh, yeah, I think if you can, if you can uh, get into good habits in terms of... Um, stopping the goals going in at the other end, like Gillingham have, have been good at, and then, you know, add some goals at the other end, uh, I don't think you'd be far away. Right. Unfortunately, it seems Gillingham um, haven't been able to to score enough this season. I think defensively, you've got one of the best records, haven't you? Yeah, I think we're about, well, up until the last couple of games, yeah, we was probably top five. And I know yeah. we're second for clean sheets. Because yeah. I, when I was at Plough Lane Tuesday night, I did. I went on their um, nine years podcast pre-match show, and they said, "Oh, what do you see? How this, see the game going?" And I stupidly said, "Oh, it'd be nil nil, or it'd just be one goal in it either way, unless there's a red card." <laughs> oh. So yeah. sorry, Jills fans. <laughs> Blame me instead of the manager and the players. I don't mind. I got broad shoulders. <laughs> so yeah, couldn't believe it. And then within thirty-eight minutes, we're down to ten men. And of course, we lost by more than one. So sorry. Um, team news. Yeah. Um, like I say every week it's we're recording on a Wednesday so there's there's no official press conference until the next day so we're just having to go off of, of our own knowledge and, and what we've seen on social media so I've not seen anything in terms of Jill's picking up any more injuries uh, Tuesday night at Plough Lane so, so what's what's the situation at Grimsby are you likely to have anybody back that was unavailable in the week for Saturday I assume I know it's a cliche, but you're not going to want to change too much, are you? Because if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, until last night, actually, we'd, we'd kept a pretty um, similar side for those for those sort of four games where we'd, we'd improved recently and kept the clean sheets. But uh, all of that said, as, as, you, as you alluded to earlier, Danny Rose didn't play last night. Obviously, mm. our talisman and our captain and... Um, yeah you know, a shoe in, in my opinion, for player of the season already. Okay. Um, it seems he has a, a a knock. Artel suggested after the game last night that could be short to midterm. So I'd be surprised, to be honest, um, if if you saw him play on, on, on Saturday. Unless oh, it's, okay. Unless it's, you know, the classic uh, manager, uh, second, you know, um, you know second, bluffing. Yeah, the old mind games. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but no, I, I would be surprised, to be honest, um, if, if he played... So obviously, you know, imagine our horror last night when when Danny Rose wasn't on the on in in the squad uh, to mm. prior to a big game against obviously uh, you know good sides such as MK Dons, but Justin Abitkru, who we have on loan from Coventry, young lad, his first um, loan spell uh, um, out away you know from youth football. Yeah, um, he's 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 been really impressive. He's had his. Uh, first two starts recently and he's got two goals. Uh, so he led the line last night. So yeah. I'd imagine um, 
I'd imagine that would be the same on Saturday. So Danny Rose, really, as far as I can tell, is, is our only um, doubt at the moment, unless, of course, you know, there was some knocks or there's fatigue. You know, we've, we've played Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday for a couple of weeks now. So he has had to shuffle a little bit last night. Um, I think, to be honest, the, it was the changes last night were probably more linked to, to Rose not sort of being up there and he had to sort of um, change the, the way we played slightly. Um, but um, yeah, I think he's the, he's the only doubt. We have uh, one long term um, in Callum Ainley. I don't think he'll be, um, he'll be back in the side until perhaps the last couple of games of the season. So, yeah, I think Danny Rose, um, you know, much to the delight perhaps of you guys, might be uh, our only Well, dad. no, I've just been looking at a Bikwu stat, so that's going to be a different kind of problem. Yeah, he's, he's started well, yeah, really he well. Is, yeah, yeah he's he only is. three starts in eight appearances, but two goals already. Yeah, that's a, that's a decent return for, like you say, because you're always taking a chance with loan players because that's why they're going out on loan, essentially. So Of course, yeah. And, and I dare say he'll go on to have um, other loan spells, perhaps League One champions championship going forward obviously he's on loan from a championship club yeah. um he's very raw you'll see on saturday he's very mm. raw but he, he's got um he's got all the attributes i think you need to succeed in in that role um he's, he's strong he's fast um he's 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 a little bit gangly he reminds me a little bit of tammy abraham in that respect in terms of his, his physique and the way he looks okay. and the way he plays um, but he was a handful last night up front a lot of the time on his own um, he occupied the MK Dons defenders he won a penalty as well which we missed I'm not sure if you saw that we missed the penalty as well last night I hadn't seen that no I just looked at the result I've not had yeah. chance to look at any highlights unfortunately he, he, he won that by um, forcing um, uh, the, forcing the goalkeeper into a mistake basically and uh, okay. the goalkeeper um, took him out and uh, and, and won a um, so yeah he's, he's obviously um happy to do the sort of high press, which Danny Rose was so good at. And uh, Ibikru seems to have slotted in, you know, quite easily into that role. So, um, so yeah, he'll, he'll certainly be one to look out for on, on Saturday. Sounds similar to the, the lad that we got from, from Watford in January, which was Jorge Atado. And he, unfortunately, he's done a knee against Swindon because he got absolutely wiped out twice in winning a penalty as well through pace <laughs> and just sort of fearlessness and raw power. So we're not sure whether we're going to see him again before the end of the campaign because he looked yeah. to be one that was sort of an unknown quantity, a bit of a maverick, which could have been the difference between just missing out and, and just getting in. So sure. That's just about us up in terms of strikers in recent seasons, unfortunately. <laughs> um so yeah, so obviously in terms of Jill's team news, we know Hurtado's not going to be available. We've got no Dom Jeffries, he's still recovering from a torn thigh. Connor Masterson will of course be suspended, who is our top scorer with six goals. So that's going to be an issue at both ends of the pitch. And we've still not seen Josh Andrews, who arrived in January from Birmingham, um, back on the grass, but but still not made an appearance, having been with the club for nearly two months. So for me, I'd probably make some changes because we seem like we've been to like potentially moving into a third phase of, of Stephen Clements already. He came in and wanted to play Championship Premier League football, in inverted commas, because that's where he's coached all career. Got found out. Ollie Hawkins came back, so we went to a robust, more traditional League Two system, played two up top, could play a 10, three centre-backs, let your wing-backs get on and remain solid out of possession. That was working fine. Like I say, up until three games ago, it looked like we'd really turned a corner, but we now look like we've been found out a little bit. Um, only scored once in the last three games and picked up a solitary point. So for me, I'd, I'm crying out for us to go to a back four and be more front-footed at home. I can understand it a bit more away from home because... You know, you're going to have to soak up pressure generally and you're going to have to pound the counter-attack a little bit. So for me, I'm hoping it forces his hand. So I'd go Glenn Morris in goal. I'd go back four of Ramo Hutt and Maxime Shadogi and I'd bring Scott Malone back into the lineup. That's nothing against Max Clark, but I think he's more suited to a back three playing as a wing-back. Um, I'd keep Ethan Coleman in as the holding midfielder. I'd then play a quarter in front of Conor Mahoney, George Lapsley, Johnny Williams and Jaden Clark. And I know that's a bit of a left-field one because he's been out of the squad for a couple of months now until the last couple of weeks where he made a couple of appearances and then was back out of the squad again on Tuesday. But I just want us to be pacey and direct and just play with a bit of bravery. I know this might be a bit of a surprise as well, considering he's not scored since since August, but I'd put Ashley Nadison up front because he's another one that would give a quick element. So I just want us to be just a little bit braver with it and a little bit more proactive in possession. Um, 
and, and see where that takes us. I just don't want these last eight games from a Jill's perspective just to fizzle out and we just sort of limp to an eighth, ninth, tenth place finish. If we have a goal and we get beat in games, then I'd much rather that than, like I say, we just let it drift towards its conclusion because that'd be even more frustrating for me. Um, Chris, it's been really good. Thank you, mate. So I'm going to wrap this up with one final question and that is always the dreaded score prediction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as we've alluded to uh, during the interview, uh, you guys don't score many. We don't concede many recently. Um, it's, it's not got a goal fest, um, you know, um, prediction really, I think, going into this one. And to be honest, I'd, again, the football purists won't like me, but I'd take a nil-nil right now. It'd keep our little run going. Um, it'd keep, obviously, Colchester, Forest Green and Sutton below us. Um, and it'd be a point closer to us, you know, getting ourselves safe. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there'll be many goals in the game. Um so I think it would probably, yeah, I'd, I don't know. I don't know. I think it it'll be it'll be decided by the odd goal. I think uh, whether that's the Gillingham one 0 or Grimsby one 0 I think it'll be decided by the odd goal. And uh, yeah, I don't think um, uh, there'll be a lot of goals in it. No, I I keep trying to convince myself that if we play a brave away because against Tramier we absolutely battered him. I think we had twenty one shots second half against Tramier. Right, okay. Like twelve were blocked in the box. Keeper made a couple of saves. I keep trying to convince myself if we do that for 90 minutes, we'll give someone a hiding. Yeah. But then I keep thinking we've not done it for two or three years. Like, so you're yeah. probably right. It's probably going to be a draw, low scoring, or one team wins it by the odd goal. Well, that was the other thing as well. I was going to say, I think we've, I think, I think we've drawn the most games in the league so far this season. I think 13 or 14 draws. I was going to so... say, you must have quite a high count of draws because if you've lost less games than us, you can't have won that yes, many exactly. where you position. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you and say, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be a draw or it'd be decided one goal either way. <laughs> Boring. Be six all now, won't it? Anyway. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I've been watching us too often for the last few years today. It won't be six all. Oh, I'd love a six all. That'd be brilliant. <laughs> My battery would die trying to record it all. That would be the trouble. <laughs> Chris, it's been a real pleasure, mate. So thank you very much. Like I say, I appreciate you coming on because you've been at work all day and that sort of kids out and all that type of thing. No, so no, go and enjoy man. the rest of your evening. Jules fans, Mariners fans, if you're still watching at this point, as I always say, thank you very much. Please go and hit that like button. Please keep subscribing and telling everyone about us. If you like Gillingham, if you like Grimsby, if you like League 2, I like to think there's something there for everyone. So please keep spreading the word. We will, of course, be back on Saturday inside the Priestfield. Myself, Ava and all the gang for a match day live. So come over and see us before the game. Give us your score predictions. And myself and Reese from German Jills will be back Sunday morning reviewing the game. So fingers crossed it's a positive one. And we can talk about three points for the Jills. But until then, enjoy the rest of your week. And up the Jills. <laughs>